Welcome to Springville Seventh-day Adventist Church Online here in Melbourne, Australia. I am Pastor Victor Acuna and I am so happy to be here with you on another wonderful Sabbath day. Today's topic is who or what motivates you? Which leads us to the question for this week, which should be obvious. What motivates you? Is it money, food, power, health, fear? Please comment down below. Now, for the hymn lyrics for today's presentation and also for, for contact information or if you would like to support this church, read in the description down below. Let us have a word of prayer. Our Father, Lord, we want to thank you for allowing us to be here with you on another Sabbath day. We want you to be our guest of honor today. Please come into this worship and bless us with your presence, we ask you in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to sing our first hymn for today, which is hymn 251, He Lives. For the lyrics of this hymn, read in the description down below. Seems to be the best motivator, isn't it? We wouldn't go to work unless we were paid, right? And hopefully they're paying us the right amount of money. Well, that's what we think. What about food? I know some people, the, anytime that you say food to them, that there's going to be food involved, they all turn up, right? Especially when I have a meeting and I invite people to the meeting and I say that my wife has got beautiful cooking. Somehow, I, I seem to have a few more that turn up. Now, what about fear? Is fear a motivator? 
it seems to me that this year a lot of people in the world has have been motivated to stay safe by fear because they're scared of either the coronavirus or they're scared that they're going to be um, fined by a policeman because they, if they may do something wrong. Now, what about health? Does health motivate you? Well, some people, well, some people, not most, but some people, I guess this year we're also motivated by trying to keep healthy and, uh, you know, uh, building up their immunity, immunity against uh, any diseases, right, by going for a walk or even putting your mask on or even, you know, washing your hands for 20 seconds or more. And uh, which is a powerful motivator for some people. Now, what about power? Power. You know, if you, if you can't give people money, or if you can't um, give people food, well, give them a position of power, right? Um, a lot of people in our community, and even in churches, uh, they are motivated because of the position they are put in, right? Just look around and tell me whether I'm right or wrong. I'm not saying that everybody's motivated by power, but there are some that are, right? What about religion? That's religion. Motivate you. I'm talking about forms of religion, right? In, in, we read here in, 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 in 2 Timothy. In 2 Timothy, according to the Apostle Paul, The form, a form of religion, it seems that he is saying it, that, that motivates some people. Second Timothy chapter 3, it's, he, he says that some people who are also very sinful, by the way, that's what it says here. If you read Tim, Second Timothy chapter 3 for, from verses 1 to 5, but I'll just read 5. He says, these people have a form of godliness just on the outside. Everything they do, it, it looks good on the outside. But they deny the power that God can provide for them inside. They don't want it. They don't want it. And he says to them, he says to us, that have nothing to do with them. In other words, have nothing to do with external religion. I mean, two people may go to church. One of them goes with the right uh, motivation, if you want to say. One of them goes because they need God. Just like Jesus says, blessed are those who need him, who, who they're poor in spirit, the ones that need him. Right? They will be blessed. And uh, there are some people that go to church for a number of reasons. Uh, one of them is to be seen by others. Some people go to church, you know, may go to re you know, a religious ceremony. It doesn't have to be a church. It could be another religion. It could be Hinduism or, or even uh, Muslims or, or anything, any other religion that you can name. And people may go there because they want to be seen. Like Jesus said, he says, don't do long prayers, he says, because, and don't be like those that pray long prayers so, because they like to be seen by others. They like to show off a number of things that they may, may have, right? Religion is a strong motivator to a lot, a form of religion. If you have a religion of the heart, that's a right, a right motivation. <coughs> now, what about entertainment? Entertainment. Entertainment is a powerful motivator. 
a lot of people wait for the weekend to come in so they can go out and go to be entertained go to a restaurant um, be with friends but also have some form of entertainment and of course liquor and all of that is part of the entertainment and maybe they, they watch a movie or something and that that's all being entertained right it's it's about having having a good time in other words entertainment entertainment is what gives you a good time you want to have a good laugh you want people to tell you jokes and all this I mean, it's not a bad thing. I mean, yeah, but in itself, if that's all you live for, if that's all you motiv if motiv that motivates you, maybe, maybe it's not quite right. Now, if you can't give people money, some people say, and you cannot give them power. And perhaps you may not even be able to give them entertainment. You might not be much of a joker or whatever. But maybe you could give them friendship, right? And you may have friends because just because you are a caring person, you empathize with them. Uh, and they are around you because they're nice to you. And you say, that, oh, they're, they're my friends. You consider them your friends. And so that motivates you to do some things in life. It's a powerful motivator. In fact, a lot of people have been born to Christ just by this factor alone. In fact, most people that come into church is because of friends. Friends that invite them. An invitation, that's all it takes many times. Now, how God motivates us, that's, that should be an obvious question today. Because we're here to worship our Lord. How does God motivate us? Does he give us money, power, friendship? Well, at times God blesses us with all sorts of things. He provides us with his friendship. At times he provides us with power too, because sometimes power is, is necessary. You need power to do certain things, like if, if a president or a, a, a premier or, or a prime minister didn't have certain powers, he wouldn't be much of a prime minister, would he? If a father or mother didn't have certain powers in the house, they wouldn't be much use, would they? They would only be just friends in the house, but no father or mother figure, which we need, by the way. I want to ask you a question, however. If God would not give you power or money, would you serve him out of friendship? Uh, yes, some, of, some of us may say, oh yes, I would, I would, I want, because he's my best friend. Okay, all right, take everything out and there is nothing there for you. Would you still serve him? Would you still be would you still regard yourself a friend of God? Now, if you look at the book of Job, chapters 1 and 2, we see the Satan going into heaven, coming into heaven and out of heaven and coming to earth. And he says to, the, to, to God, he says, Job only serves you because you protect him. Take his protection away and you will see that he doesn't, doesn't serve you anymore. He will curse you. So God says to him, okay, let's, let's, let, you can do that, but don't touch him. Don't touch him. Okay, so Satan, not God, Satan. And in this world, many times we blame God for these things comes in and destroys in in a very quick way. He destroys his wealth and his all his children. They're all killed by Satan. Now, Job turns around and he says, "I came into this world 
with nothing. I got of this world with nothing. Praise be to God. <laughs> I can just imagine Satan thinking, uh, is there something else I can try? Then he says to, to God, well, the thing is that if you touch his flesh, you see, if you, if you give him something, you know, something, a, a really bad sickness, he will surely curse you. So, the Lord, the Lord says to Satan, all right, do that, but don't kill him. So Satan goes and does that. And again, Job doesn't curse God and he praises God again. Of course, at that, at that stage, Satan just cannot, cannot do anything else. In fact, Job, he has such friendship, has such deep friendship with God that he says, and it's recorded in Job 13 verse 15, and I read it to you from, from his holy scripture, Job, in the book of Job 13 verse 15, and it says, Though he is slay me, yet will I hope in him. Though he has slay me, yet will I hope in him. He was willing to go with God anyway, even if it meant his death. Even if God would forsake him, he would not forsake God. That's how much Job was, was, was into God. And that kept him going through his life. Now, how does God motivate us? Because it's good enough for Job. It's good enough for a lot of people in the Old Testament. And we see these stories and they were motivated by God. How does God motivate us? And I'll just like to go through some principles, some things that I have observed in Scripture. Now, number one, He ministers to us in our time of need and shows us His love. And I just read to you just, just one, one verse, a couple, actually a couple of verses. And it's in 1 John chapter 4, verses 7, 8, and 10. And it says like this, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Uh, it's talking about sacrificial love, love that goes, that, that does anything for your friend or your family or anyone. It goes beyond anything that we'll, we know in this world. Most people in this world are not going to do this. But the one that is born from God does this. Everyone who loves, that's what it says here, has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. God would sacrifice and do anything for you. He is the most empathetic being in the whole universe. He knows where you are. He knows your needs even before, you know, you have them. He knows. He anticipates. And in, in his plan for us, he anticipated that perhaps human beings would, would sin and would fall away from him. And before that, he extended, he made a plan. He extended this plan. And in verse 10, it says to us, This is love, not that we loved God, but that He loves us. He, he sacrificed His love. It says here, He loves us. When He says He loves us, it's not just cushy, cushy love. It's not like, oh, he, here come my son, I'll give you a, a hug. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that's, kind of love but God God 
That's sacrificial love. He says, he, and send his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. That is the kind of love that God has for us. He would do this again and again and again. But remember, God's love is such that God himself put himself on the cross for us because he loves us. Now, love is the most fundamental way in which he motivates us. If that doesn't move us, well, there is a number of things that he also does, and I'd like to mention them to you. Now, God takes us. When he, when, he, when, you, when he finds you, he takes you from this world and he shows you his world. Because he says to us in John chapter 18, verse 36, that he's not from this world. He is not from this world. Jesus is not from this world. And if we are his disciples, if we, if we want to follow him, we, we, we should be also aiming we should be also yearning for the things that he yearns for. We should be hoping for, for what he has in store for us. This life is but a pause. It's not going to go long. It's just going to be a few years time. For me, time has six, I'm 60 years old. <laughs> and time has gone so quick. I, I still remember when I was a three-year-old. And it's just gone so quick, I can't believe it. Time is, in this life is but a pause in time. Compared to eternity, it's not, nothing. That's why we ought to yearn for what comes. You know, in Australia, most people, they don't love. They don't like pie in the sky sort of things. They don't like what's going to happen later. They're into what's going to happen for you right now. But God is willing to do that right now. As you live on this earth, he will show you this other dimension if you only let him. Now, number three, he gives us his love so we can share it with others. He In 2 Corinthians 5, Verse 14, we are told the following. 5 verse 14, for Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. Now, we are compelled. We are compelled by God's love. <laughs> Christ's love compels us. He's, he's sacrificial. When we see what he, what, what, what we, what we did for us, what he did for us, and we say, wow. And so he says to, to, to us, as I have been, I've shown you an example. Be like that with other people. I was with you. I show you that love. And it is within your grasp to do the same. And these people in the world will know that we are his disciples, Jesus said, in that we show love, in that we, are, we show sacrificial love for one another. Not just for one another, but also for those around us. We're willing to stick out our necks for people around us. Now, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, in the same chapter that I, I'm just reading from, it says to us, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. He transforms us into new people. And he doesn't stop there. He, he takes us from, from where we were. And he gives us this new life. He gets you into his world. And you can see it. You can see it like, like as if it was daylight. Bright, bright, on a, it's like a bright new day. You see everything. Before, life was dark. And you couldn't see really. But now you see. 
Then I was blind, but now I see. That is my testimony. I can, I can say it again. Then I was blind, but now I see. Now God has made me new and God has kept on transforming me every day as much as I let him. He is in the process of trans transforming me all the time. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 16, it says to us that he gives us hope. Hope, hope for a better future. Hope for a world without any problems, any fears, any coronaviruses, any no more health issues. Where we won't hunger anymore. Where we won't need entertainment anymore. Because we will be in the presence, in the constant presence of God. By the way, God has the best sense of humor. He has. He is, you want to be around him. But he doesn't make fun of anyone. He doesn't put anyone down for you to, to, to for you to laugh. He just simply talks to you and you feel so happy. And, and you, you feel like laughing. <laughs> and you feel like jumping up for joy just to be next to this wonderful God that Christ is for us. In, in, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, also he says to us that he provides us with faith. Faith that is not ours, it says to us there. This faith belongs to God. I'll, I'll read to you the, um, the verse so that we're all in agreement on this. For it is, it, it is by grace you have been saved through faith. Through faith. And this faith, of course, and grace, of course, is not from yourselves. It is the gift. Of God so that no one can boast grace from God salvation from God everything that we do in this life if it is any good if it is a wonderful thing it comes from God and we shouldn't boast about that we have done it it is God's work in our hearts a lot of the things that happen on this earth that are really, really good, whether we like it or not, God has inspired that. Whether people are willing to, to say that or not, God has inspired us. He, he shines blessings on everyone on this world. The wicked and the righteous, He shines on everyone. And even sometimes when things come out of places that you would think that nothing good would come out. God's still working in that place. He's still working through because he wants people to be saved in that place too. Even when we have not been there in countries where, where God, his word has not been there. God is, will be with them too. And I've, I've seen many times, I've read many books where God works in miraculous ways even today people say there are no miracles in this life of course everything i'm talking to you is a miracle from god everything that i'm talking to you is a miracle from god just wait till you let god into this on top of that jesus says to us in matthew 28 verse 20 he says to us he gives us a wonderful promise this most wonderful promise he says to us in Matthew 28, verse 20, verse 20, Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, it says, And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. He says, He will be with us all the time. Today, I want to challenge you. You know, I want to give you a challenge. You know that we only pay lip service to God when we serve God because of money. And there are certain sub people that 
they, 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 they serve God because their pastors, their preachers in those churches say to them, if you give to God, if you're faithful to God, God will bless you with money and with riches. Now, I, I tell you, that is not scriptural. God will bless you. He says to us, I have never seen the righteous forsaken. He will never forsake us. We will always feel his presence. But he's not going to, we only pay lip service to God if we serve him because of money, food, power, religion, entertainment, or friendship, even friendship. We only pay lip service to God if we do that. The main reason God just motivates us is because of who He is. When we have Him, when I, uh, and, and this is where I, the challenge comes in, just let God motivate you. Do not think in terms of the world. <laughs> Do not think in terms of the reasons I've told you before. Just think about Christ. Think about God. Put yourself, let Him into your life. And, you know, he, let him minister to you in your time of need. Let him open your life to him. If you have done it before, let him in again. And this time, say to the Lord, do what you want in my life. And let him show his love. Don't push him aside. Let him show his love to you. And let him give you everything that I've said to you. Let us, let him minister to you in your time of need. Let him take you into another world. Let his love transform you so that you can share it with others. Let his, let him transform you into a new people. Let him give you a new hope. Let him provide you with faith and let him into your life all the time, may God be with you and may you totally give yourself to him so that you will go into the, the, your future with certainty, knowing that God is the one that is constantly talking to you and motivating you in your life. Amen. We're going to do our last hymn for today, which is hymn 499, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Because 
You are our Father. And because you are the one that can truly motivate us without any any conditions. You motivate us because you want you want the best, the very best for us. Be, the best that that anyone would know for us. Lord, and we want to ask you to be the first one, the main the main motivator in our life that everything that we do is immersed with your presence with your love because we ask you in the name of Jesus amen well we would like to ask you to consider the question for this week what motivates you is it money food power health fear name it comment down below and of course if you would like to support the ministry of the Springville Seventh Day Adventist Church read in the description down below there is one more thing i'd like to say and that is may god bless you and may he keep you safe Amen.